Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. He also said, You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So welcome this morning as a gathering of people of the light, those who have a hope and a joy in all that comes through Jesus living within us and who go through the week every day in whatever we do, sharing and spreading that light and that joy and that hope. This is our gathering place, our connection, as we gather together to recharge and be reminded and to hold on to that hope. So welcome wherever you're joining us from this morning as we worship and are reminded of our God who is mighty and great and strong. So let's sing together as we begin. How great is our God. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice Wraps himself in light and Darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice And trembles at his voice How great is our God Sing with me How great is our God Oh, see how great Amen. How powerful is that? The name above all names. No matter what we are going through right now, and it's very real, 
Our God is great. He is the name above all names. And that's the reason we gather today. This morning, Reverend Roger Brooke from Compassion will be preaching and sharing about their work and has a great word to bring us, to encourage us to be people of the light. So look forward to that. There is so much to be thankful for, for who God is and for what he's done. I think for those who are local of just the beautiful surroundings that we have, the rain of this season, uh, for these, uh, these shots of our uh, Chunga community that uh, Josh has provided, just to remind us and reflect on, on what a wonderful place that we live. There is so much to be thankful for. Uh, so let's pray together to be thankful and to confess as we begin and continue in worship. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are great. We thank you for all you've done for us in creation, through the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus. We thank you for all you've done for us in the beautiful world we live in, the privilege we have, the blessing of shelter, the blessing of seasons and rain. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for the opportunity to gather like this, to connect even in some way. We thank you for the love and the care of our community around us who are shining your light even this week. So God, as we come, we acknowledge your greatness and our failings. And we come to you and confess that our attitudes, our actions, our thoughts, even in moments this week, have, have not honoured you. So we confess those. We lay them before you. And we thank you that you take our sins. And as we turn from them, you remove them as far as the east is from the west, that we are forgiven and free. Thank you, God, for who you are, for the work of Jesus, for our forgiveness, our freedom and life in its fullness through him. We offer ourselves to you as we continue to worship today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's see what's happening in the wider work of the church as we look at some notices. This week for Coffee Time on Zoom, Watch your book from Compassion will join us. You can link in at 11 a.m. by clicking on the link that will be provided in the chat section of the church online page or in an email earlier this week. Not on our weekly email list? Email minister at achunga.ucasa.org.au and we'd love to keep you in the loop. Contact details are also on our website. If you have a specific prayer request, you can click in the prayer request button or email us. This will be passed into a group who pray for the weekly needs or to our Tuesday night prayer team. It has never been easier to set up regular electronic giving for your weekly tithes and offerings. Simply fill out a form, return it to UC Invest, and a regular transfer will be set up to our church account. You can click the giving button on the church online platform or head to our church website for account details and to find the form. Hi guys, I know um, many of you are probably heading back to school this week. Uh, some of the um, children and youth might be going into classes or you might still be doing school online at home. Hopefully uh, it won't be long though till you're all able to go back to school again um, and spend time with your friends. I know uh, we've got a Japanese student living with us this year, Dyke, and I know he's really been happy to be back at school this week especially because he's been able to play basketball at recess and lunch with his friends. Uh, I'm, I'm really missing seeing all of you guys at children's church and youth um, and I hope that we will get to catch up again soon but uh, for now um, yeah we we'll just look forward to doing the zoom catch-ups and uh, hopefully you get to enjoy the videos on our Sway page. So this week on our children's church Sway page we're uh, looking at compassion We've got a few videos to watch on there and activities to do. And hopefully you get a chance to check it out after the service. All right, thanks, bye. Well, happy birthday to all those who are having a birthday in the month of May. Here we go. There's a great list of you this month. It must be a very popular month. And I'll start off with the two young fellas, young Micah and Josiah. Going to be a busy wee month in the... Uh, in that household, I can tell you. Happy birthday, Micah and Josiah. Then we come to Randall, who had his birthday yesterday. And then we've got a plethora of them next week. We've got Judy on Thursday, 
Heather on Friday, Avril and Vanessa on Saturday. Happy birthday to all of you. Then we come to Caleb, Stephen, Royce and Chloe. And uh, hope they have a good uh, month as well. And then we come to Ross and Darcy. Now they're special this month. Ross turns 60 and Darcy, you're 20. Have a great uh, month, a pair of you. And then in Josh and Haley in your household, it'll be busy as well this month, I'm sure. Then we come to Carolyn, Todd, Christine. Hope it's all right out there on the farm, Chrissy. And uh, on the 27th of the month, just creeping in over the border, is Bev. Have a great day on the 20th, 27th, Bev. Now, I can't close without one other uh, special occasion. And that's Sarah and Brett are celebrating their first wedding anniversary. Happy wedding anniversary to the pair of you tomorrow, Sarah and Brett. And uh, so there we are. There's the list. And uh, righto, we're, we're going to have a crack at singing happy birthday. So here we go. I hope you all enjoyed singing uh, Happy Birthday as we traditionally do. And have a wonderful month, all of you. So it's over to you now, Matt. Thanks, Bob. Well, many of us are aware of the work of Compassion. And in fact, 21 people from this church are already registered as Compassion Children sponsors, which is a wonderful effort. Reverend Roger Brooke is a Uniting Church minister in South Australia, but currently is placed uh, working for Compassion, working with churches and sharing of their work and partnering with us to see that work continued. So Roger today will be preaching for us, but also sharing a little bit about the work of Compassion and how you can support that. So let's hand over to Roger and welcome him today. Uh, good morning and uh, thank you for inviting me along to be a part of your church today. Certainly, Pastor Matt, thank you for letting me come. I'm Roger Brooke. I'm from Compassion Australia. Uh, Compassion Australia, some of you would know about that. Some of you already sponsor children through Compassion, but maybe some of you um, have limited knowledge of that or, or, or would like to understand that a little bit more. And there are three distinctives about Compassion Australia. The, the first is that uh, we're Christ-centered. We believe that uh, Christ needs to be known in our world, that people need to come into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And, and we believe that every child needs to have the opportunity to hear and to respond to the the gospel message. That's our first distinctive. Secondly, um, we're child focused. Uh, we believe our programs uh, need to engage children as complete individuals. That uh, if we change a child's life, we then change a generation's life and we then actually stop poverty going into the next generation. And, and so we, we, we're child focused and uh, we believe a child needs to be fully developed into the image of God, both educationally and, and spiritually and um, medically, but, but also emotionally, that this child needs to be all that God's created them to be. Thirdly, um, our distinctive is we're church-based. Uh, we believe that the church, through Jesus Christ, is the hope of the world, that the, the church is, is the one that cares for our world and the people of our world more than anybody else, and the church can introduce people and communities to, to Jesus Christ the church can bring joy and, and hope. And, and so we're church-based. We work through 7,000 churches uh, with over 7,000 programs in some of the poorest countries of the world. And, and they're bringing hope and, uh, and changing lives in an incredible way. In our world right now, there are 385 million children, over 385 million children that, that live in extreme poverty. They say because of the situation of our world today that that's actually a, a growing number. 385 million, like, it's just not how it should be. It's not, it's not what God created people to live in. Out of that 385 million children, they, they say about 5,600,000 children die each year, die from needless things that most of the world don't even have a problem with, lack of water, 
uh, sanitation, healthcare, a whole range of things that so many of us take for granted. So many children are dying each year, 15,000 each day. 15,000 children each day. It's, again, that's just not what God created. That's not his desire, that's not his hope, that's not his plan. He, his heart must break over that. But he's actually called us to step into that as Christians. In, in Proverbs, Proverbs 31 eight, it says, Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for those who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly, defend the rights of the poor and the needy. And, and here is just this reminder for us as God's children that we're to step into a world of brokenness with the hope of Jesus Christ. We're, we're here to defend the rights of the poor and the needy. We're the ones who need to make a difference in that. God wants to use us to actually turn around what's going on in our world that he never desired to take place. He's calling us to do that. In actual fact, that, that challenge goes even greater in, in, in Matthew chapter 25 where, where Jesus comes and uh, he's talking about end times where he's going to come back and he's going to judge, make a, make a final judgment. And it's a pretty challenging passage of scripture, Matthew 25, 40. He says, then the king will reply, that's Jesus. Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you, you did for me. And, and here's this situation where Jesus is saying, as you've come into a relationship with me, and an evidence of that is that we've actually gone to the least of these people in our world, the least of these, the broken, the hurting, the impoverished, that we've gone into their situation with the love of Jesus Christ to make a difference, to bring them out of that. And, and we have a responsibility to do that. That's a, that's a challenge for us, an important challenge for us as Christians. And so at Compassion, that's, that's our goal. Our goal is that we would step into that brokenness uh, with the love of Jesus Christ, that, that we would do all that we can to bring people out of that and to introduce them to Jesus Christ. Now, some of you are involved with, as I said before, with Compassion already, and you pay $12 a week, and that $12 a week is changing a life. That, that $12 a week is bringing a child and educating that child and uh, bringing health care to that child and emotional support to that child, but also bringing Jesus to that child. And we just want to thank you for doing that. Like, you're making an incredible difference. In, in, in not just the child's life, but their family's life and their community's life. And you're actually also helping a church live out their God-given commands to serve the least of these. But maybe some of you aren't, aren't sponsoring a child and, and maybe you've been thinking, man, I would like to make a difference. I would like to step into that brokenness. And, and maybe you've got $12 a week. Maybe you could sponsor more than one child. And, and maybe God's placing on your heart right now, um, even in the difficult circumstances we're living in, that you could make a difference. Um, we've got a link today that uh, you can go on to. You'll, you'll see this link in a second. Uh, the link will just lead you into a compassion site where you can look at children that are waiting to be sponsored, children from various countries, boys, girls, different ages, that are just waiting for someone to step into their world. And, and you can maybe have a heart for a certain country and you can find a child from that country that, that even one, one day you might be able to visit. But certainly that child will write to you and you'll be able to write to that child and, and build a relationship and, and, and pray that God will intervene. You can do that every day. It's, a, it's an amazing opportunity that you will have to actually impact our world for Jesus Christ. So I'd, I'd love for you to think about that and, and pray about that. And again, go onto that link and, and, and have a look at that site and, and maybe just open yourself up to the possibility of, of making a difference. As I said, with one child, but maybe you've got the capacity to do more than that. Uh, I want to show you a video. It, it's a video of a, a girl who, who grew up in, in, in very difficult situations and uh, she was a sponsored child. And she's just sharing her story. Her name's Jennifer. After that video, um, uh, again, you'll be just, uh, I'll be coming back and, and, and sharing the word of God. And uh, I'm looking forward to doing that. But, but let me just say thank you for inviting me along. Thank you for allowing me to come and share this. And as I said, in the word, I'll, I might just expand on this a little bit more, which will be, which will be challenging, but I, I think also exciting. So, so thanks for letting me be a part of your service. We'll um, catch you soon. I am Jennifer Gitiri and I'm from Kenya. Growing up with a single parent in the slum was very, very difficult for me. Really living hand to mouth because if my mom went to look for employment or even wash other people's clothes, if she came in the evening with 
a dollar that's what we would use to buy a meal and eat at that particular time if you wake up tomorrow there's nothing to eat then we'd take a glass of water and run to school but compassion I opened a project at a church near our home and for the first time as a young girl I saw hope Compassion provided for everything. They gave me books. When I was sick, Compassion would pay for my medical care. And I'm also thankful to my sponsor who was very, very encouraging. You know, just writing letters of encouragement, telling me that you can make it, you can do it. Your past should not determine your future. I believe my sponsors were God sent. When we wrote to Jennifer, it was important to let her know that we really cared about her. I just said what a mother would say, you know, we're so proud of you. We're so proud that your grade card is good and that you've done such a good job. I remember vividly our neighbor's child was raped. The child was 10 years and these were the kind of things that I saw growing up that really made me decide to be a lawyer, someone who could speak for the rights of those who cannot speak for themselves. The beginning of this year, I joined the Kenya School of Law so that now I can be admitted into the bar and become an advocate in the High Court of Kenya. This summer, I went to the United States of America to, to be an advocate. I shared passionately about my story and how my sponsors had made a difference in my life, and they were brought on stage. Here they are. It was life-changing just to, to see those two people who'd sacrificed their resources, who used to pray for me, who used to encourage me. So for, for me to see these two people was, was just amazing. Compassion gave us the opportunity to reach halfway around the world to rescue one little girl from whatever the future might have had in store for her. It makes me cry all the time when I think of how far God has brought me, you know, from the ditches of poverty to this. Good morning, everybody. As we come to pray together today, let us hear these words from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. The Lord Almighty is with us. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. Let us pray. We bring you our praise, our adoration, our thanks and our worship this morning, O oh God. Thank you for the ways you have blessed us this past week. Help us to see you in every circumstance of our day, of our lives, and to trust you when we can't see the way ahead clearly. Thank you that you do go before us and will never leave us. Thank you that you are our safe place and our refuge. Thank you that you love us so dearly. Thank you that you've blessed us with hope and light in this challenging season of our life. Help us to bring hope and light to our family and neighbours by the words we speak and by our practical actions of love and care. Help us to respond with open hearts to the needs of others beyond our own country, Father. Thank you for the awesome work that many organisations are doing where the needs are very great. We especially thank you this morning for the work of compassion in many countries where children are being cared for in, in important practical ways and are also hearing your message of forgiveness, love and hope for them and their families. Please give wisdom and a special measure of your grace to all those working with children in need and bless each child and the home they come from in ways they need it most. Father, we pray for all those worldwide who are affected by the coronavirus, individuals and families. We ask for your comfort for those grieving the loss of a loved one, peace for those who are living with fear, 
and healing for those who are ill. Give wisdom to our Prime Minister and the leaders in each state as they soon begin the task of relaxing some of the restrictions we have all been living with. Father, we lift up to you our family members and friends who are grieving at this time, those who are ill, who are undergoing chemotherapy, radiation and other treatments, those awaiting test results, those who have lost their jobs and those who are lonely, anxious or depressed. We ask for your healing and your hope for each one, for your joy to lift their spirits and for them to know they are extravagantly loved by you. Thank you for bringing each of us together in this online worship time this morning. Hear our prayers, both spoken and silent, dear Father. May our praise and worship bring you honour and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Morning all. Miss you lots. Here's the, today's reading. It comes from Isaiah chapter 61. The first three verses. It's entitled, The Year of the Lord's Favour. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour, and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendour. This is the word of the Lord. How about we pray? Father, we just thank you again for the incredible joy it is to meet together as brothers and sisters in Christ. We pray that your spirit would be upon us, that your spirit would be guiding our thoughts and our hearts, our motives. I pray that as we open your word that there would be an openness to receive from you. We just pray that you would teach us and uh, instruct us and encourage us and that we would be faithful. Uh, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, I want to encourage you and challenge you and, and, and hopefully inspire you to think more deeply about how Christ can use you to make a huge difference. One of the key questions that Christians want to understand is, and, and I think in my ministry, it's probably a question I've been asked more and more than any other question. And it's quite simply, what does Jesus want me to do with my life? I hear this question all the time. It's, it's asked in different ways, but, but ultimately... People want to know, Jesus, what do you want me to do? How, how do you want me to live my life? And so I want to look at that question. And, and to do that, I, I, I want to ask three questions. Firstly, why did Jesus come? What did Jesus do is the second question. And thirdly, what do we do in response to this? We had read earlier uh, the passage from Isaiah 61 verses 1 to 3. This is a prophetic passage of scripture in which the prophet Isaiah predicts what the future coming Messiah would do. He predicted what the future Messiah was going to really be all about, the nature and the character and, and the purposes of the, the future Messiah. Now I want to move into Luke chapter 4. Jesus uh, here has been led into the wilderness and uh, there is he tempted by Satan. Jesus leaves that situation, not giving in to the temptation, and he begins his ministry. And Luke chapter 4 tells us this situation. Luke 4, 14 to 21. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. 
Jesus quotes from the passage of scripture in Isaiah 61 that we had read earlier. Now, do you think that this was just luck that Jesus, as he began his ministry, reads from Isaiah 61 about the coming Messiah? Or do you think God planned it? Well, God planned it. It wasn't luck at all. God planned it. And as Jesus finished reading, he openly claimed that he is that Messiah that he is the one promised to come hundreds of years earlier by Isaiah. He declared, today this scripture is fulfilled. I am the Messiah. I have come. Today is the beginning of what Isaiah prophesied. Now, I want to give you some biblical context before we get into the practicalities of this. I believe that the number one reason that Jesus came into our world was to do with sin. Jesus says in John 10.10, A thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. The thief, Satan, the devil, or whatever name you want to give him, the same one that tempted Jesus in the wilderness to sin against God, tempts us to sin against God, which steals, kills, and destroys our relationship with God. And Jesus came to deal with that so that we could live the life we were created to. And when Jesus quotes from Isaiah 61 to begin his ministry, he declared quite openly that he had come to deal with five key aspects of sin. The first is this. He said, to preach the gospel to the poor. Sin causes poverty, social, economic and spiritual poverty. Jesus came to preach the gospel, the good news to those that were living in bad news, to those living in poverty and so much of our world that lives in extreme poverty. Secondly, Jesus says that he had sent, sent, he was sent to heal the brokenhearted. Sin breaks heart. It causes incredible pain in relationship. Sin destroys love and it leaves people living in brokenness. And we all have experienced that. We've all experienced the, the pain of a broken relationship, whether that be a, a husband or a wife or a, a, a child or a mother or a father. That we, we've experienced that and all broken relationships are, are caused by sin. Thirdly, Jesus says to proclaim liberty to the captives. Sin enslaves people. Sin keeps them in darkness and imprisoned and Jesus came to set them free. Number four, he said to recover the recovery of sight to the blind. Sin blinds people from the truth, from the way that God created things to be and from the way that God created us to be. And Jesus came to open our eyes, not only to see the truth of God, but to see God himself. And lastly, Jesus says, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Sin oppresses people. It robs people of joy and hope and dignity and justice. And Jesus came to liberate people from bondage and oppression. Sin causes all of those problems. And and Jesus says, I've come to deal with that. Sin is why Jesus came. And Isaiah 61 is a prophetic message as to what the Messiah would do. Jesus came to proclaim the kingdom of God to all those people who because of sin were living in the kingdom of darkness now let's have a look at um romans 3 23 a verse that 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 many of you will know quite well romans 3 23 says for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of god now a lot of us know that verse it's a bit of a memory verse and and we know full well that everybody has sinned we live in a, a sinful world that 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 we are over and over again commit sin we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of god that's the bad news but if we go to the next verse which people don't really know or remember romans 3 24 it says and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by jesus christ you see the bad news is for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of god but the good news the very next verse and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Now, there's a lot of spiritual and religious words there, but Jesus came to deal with the sin of the world. That's why he came. And he came to do that by giving us grace freely, that we would be free from sin or free from the bondage of sin, free to live the life that he created us to live, free to be the people he wanted us to be. Now, that's, that's what he did. It's very simple. That's what he did. From the time he began his ministry to the time of the cross and resurrection, that's what he spoke about. He healed people. He delivered people. He preached. He taught. He showed by example that sin was destroying lives and he came to deal with that. And the ultimate example of this, where it came to its conclusion, was the cross, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's why he came. That's what he did. Now, 
The challenging question is, what do we do in response to this? It's, it's a really challenging question. Let's look firstly at the book of Acts, where we're told, in the last days, this is Acts 2.17, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. So remember this, the spirit of God has been poured out upon you and, and me. It has been poured about upon the people of God. Secondly, let's have a look at John 14, 12. This is where Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. What do we do in response to what Jesus has done? Well, we're going to do what Jesus did. That's what he says in John 14. We're going to do what he did. And what did Jesus do? Well, let's remember. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, Jesus says. And we need to remember from Acts 2, the Spirit of the Lord is upon us and has anointed us. Why? To preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus wants you to encounter the poor and the brokenhearted, those in captivity, those blinded to the truth, those oppressed. He wants you and me, as he wants all Christians that they are filled with the Holy Spirit, to go where sin is robbing people of the life they are created for. Christians keep asking, what does Jesus want me to do? He has made it really clear. We're to do what he did. Now, I know when people ask the question, what does Jesus want me to do with my life? Most people are thinking about what job does he want me to do? What, maybe what, what ministry in a church does he want me to do? Maybe should I go out with this guy or this girl? Who should I marry? How many children should we have? What job should I do? Should we go on this holiday? What car should I buy? Should I get a caravan? Or a whole range of questions we keep asking about what Jesus want, would want me to do. Now, they're really important questions. But I want to suggest they're secondary questions. It's a secondary question to the, the real question of what does Jesus want me to do? Because as we are filled with the Holy Spirit, our first call is to do what Jesus did. And as we do, the secondary issues, which are important, will be answered in very different ways. Because our focus is on what Jesus wants, not upon what we want. So often, I, I think we, just, we as Christians get around the wrong way how we are to live our lives. We want to get our needs met first and then we'll serve. We want to be right, maybe materially and, and from a wealth perspective, and then I'll give. But Jesus says, no, 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 no. First things first. We're to live out our Christian life doing what Jesus did, going into the brokenness of our world. And then secondly, which as I said are important, those issues will be met. Matthew 6.33 says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. As, as we seek to live out the first principle of our calling in a relationship with Jesus Christ to the broken of our world, he then promises to meet all of our other needs. Or if we, we look at the same Understanding in Philippians 4.19, it says, And my God will meet all your needs according to his riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. See, see, our God promises to meet all our needs, but we first need to step into what he's calling us to do, to live the life he's created for us, which is to serve the broken, the oppressed, the captive, the blind, the poor of our world. That's what he's calling us to do. And, and his promise is, as we do that as his church, as we do that as Christians, then, then he promises to meet all of our needs in Christ Jesus. And I have to tell you, I think we can trust him to meet our needs. I think God is a faithful God. And I think we believe that promise of scripture. And so as we believe that, we need to live in that, not just think it's words on a page. It's challenging, isn't it? One thing I've learned um, in, in my life is that Jesus can meet my needs far better than I can meet my needs. 
He can provide for me far in far deeper ways than, than I can provide for myself. What he has for me in the kingdom is far more than what I can obtain for myself. And so I want to trust him to meet all my needs. And, and I want us to put first things first. Serve him so that in serving him, my needs will be met in, in an incredible way. I just believe we can trust God to do that. I, I want to introduce uh, someone that I met just, just last year. I, it's a guy called Justin. He's, he's 14 years old. And uh, I had a photo of him, but uh, I'm sorry, I can't show it to you on, on, the, on this sort of setup. Uh, I led and helped lead a team of pastors from, from Adelaide to, to the Philippines last year. And, and, and we met this young man called, called Justin. As we, as we went to his home... Uh, there was a, it was, the home was just tin with holes and rust and it was about 30 metres wide and there were all these doors and windows cut out of this tin and, and there were families that were living in there but there was this one door that opened into a bit of a, a laneway and this laneway was quite narrow and quite dark and it was quite rough, it was stones and rubble and a bit of cement but not very much and there were wires going all down this laneway which went for about 40 or 50 metres and if you've ever been to, to Asia you know their wiring system's not like our wiring system and and, uh, and there was water just dripping all over these wires. And as we walked down this uh, little laneway, this alleyway, there were doors everywhere and, uh, and, just, and, and windows, but, but, but mainly just doors. And then we got to this opening where there was a stairwell and we, um, we went in there and we climbed up these stairs. And then as we got to the top of the stairs, which is, was the first, like level one, and there was a door and there's another door and then there was a brick wall. And on that brick wall was a ladder, just bits of wood nailed to, uh, to the wall. And uh, we were to climb up this ladder. Now, I'm, you can't see here, and uh, I'm, I'm quite a big bloke. And so I was thinking, no, I'm not sure this ladder is going to hold me. And so, uh, but we had to go up. But it was getting dark as well because there's no lights here. So we put our phones on and we turned our torch on. And I climbed up and, and, and we got to the next level. There was a door and there was a door. And then another brick wall with just the same sort of ladder on. And so we climb up there and then there's a door and there's a door and then there's this pile of rubble and we climbed over that and there was another door. And this was Justin's house. Uh, Justin's house was uh, seven feet by seven feet. In the midst of darkness, there was one light in, in this room. Uh, he lives there with his mum, his sister and his dad. Everything they owned was in seven feet by seven feet. If they had to shower, they had to go down all these ladders and go and have a shower with... Everybody else, if they needed to get water, the same process. It was um, a terrible situation. It was um, one of the worst situations I've ever seen. But we were invited into their home and uh, we, we sat down on the floor and uh, there was about six of us, seven of us in this room and, and it, it was crowded. Like, there wasn't a lot more space. And uh, through an interpreter, we just asked Justin what he'd like to do with his life. And he said, uh, I want to be a sailor. And we said, why do you want to be a sailor? He says, because I can earn enough money to take my family out of this. He's a 14 year old boy who's planning to help his family because his family live in a situation that they can't get out of. We asked the mum uh, what we, we could pray for her children. And, and she said, I just pray that they finish their education because she knew that if they could get a good education, then they had a great chance of getting out of that situation. A few months earlier uh, to this, Justin um, was sponsored through Compassion. He, uh, he became a Compassion-sponsored child and he started going to a church and he started to um, get some of his health needs met and his family also then started to go to the church. And, and it was from that moment that <coughs> Excuse me. It was from that moment that uh, Justin started to have some hope. And that's where he started to be able to dream. You know, as I remember where Justin lived and, and meeting him, there were hundreds of doorways leading into rooms where families lived just like Justin, seven feet by seven feet. All sharing the same toilets, all sharing the same showers. And this was one facility 30 metres by 50 metres. In Manila alone, there would be hundreds of these places. In a world, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people, millions upon millions upon millions of people live in this situation. 
That's not how God created it to be. There is a brokenness in our world. There's a poverty and an enslavement and an oppression that is destroying lives. And Jesus has called us to live out our faith in such a way that we step into those situations with the hope of Christ's love. With the provisions that we have to provide for them to be able to, to make a difference. Jesus says that's why he came into the world. And as his spirit is upon us, he's calling us to do exactly the same thing. First things first, to go into the brokenness of our world with the love of Jesus Christ. Now we can't all travel to do that, but there are many organisations, Compassion is just one of those, that help us to be able to do that in intangible ways. It's a terrible situation that so many people are, are living in. And, and I, I can remember just leaving Justin's place and, and asking the question, who's going to go to all of these people? And just re being reminded by Jesus, you are. My church is. The people I've called and the people I'm providing for, that's, that's who's going to go here. That's who's going to make the difference. That's who's going to step in. It's us. It's us. You see, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. It is us. We've been called by God to step into the brokenness and poor of our world with the love of Jesus Christ. What, a, what an amazing privilege that Jesus would entrust that to us. What an amazing challenge that he would do that. You see, the good news is that we don't do that in our own strength. We do this in the strength and the provision of Jesus Christ. You see, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you as the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. As the Spirit of the Lord is upon us, we are empowered and strengthened and given the ability and the resources to make an incredible difference in our world. Let me pray. Father, we just thank you again that we live in this amazing relationship with you, that we're not in this alone, that we have hope and purpose and love and grace, which all comes from you and that comes to us in such a powerful way. But Father, we're also challenged by you to live that out into a broken world where we can actually share that and to show people that there is a better way, there is a greater hope, there is a fulfilment and a purpose for them. So Father, I just pray that you would use us. Whatever that looks like, I pray that you would use us, that, that we would be open through the power of your spirit to reach out. Even in this difficult time that we live in now, we're still a blessed people. And even though some are struggling more than others, I pray that out of our plenty, we would become generous. And out of our generosity, your grace would be made known in a world that is being destroyed by sin. So, Father, we thank you for forgiveness. And we thank you for love. And we thank you for grace and hope and faith. May we live in those and share those in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy on me Everyone needs forgiveness The kindness of a saviour The hope of nations Saviour He can move the mountains My God is mighty to save he is mighty to say forever author of salvation 
Thank you again for uh, letting me come and, and share today. It's been a real privilege for me to be able to do this. Uh, I'm not used to speaking online. I, I think uh, when you're online and you're streaming, uh, the camera adds 30 pounds, so I'm sorry about that. But uh, I just pray that uh, God will use you, that God will make a difference. If you want to sponsor a child, you feel called to do that through Compassion, please uh, look at the link uh, after the service and maybe during the week and uh, just be challenged by God about the difference that you can make. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of your, your day. God bless. Thanks, Roger. And a reminder that Roger will be joining us if you're here on Sunday morning for our coffee time at 11 on Zoom. So you can ask him some questions then. If you're also interested in sponsoring or donating to Compassion, we'll put up that link in just a moment for you to consider uh, your ongoing offering. As we continue to live out this week and as we offer ourselves to God, will you pray with me as we pray for our lives and the offerings we've given online and in different ways and the ongoing work of compassion as we close? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all you've done for us. And so in response to you, we offer all of our gifts of money, the tithes and offerings that have been given online. We offer our lives and all that we've given through our energy this week and in the week to come. We offer you the extra gifts that are given through the work of supporting compassion and blessing children across the world. We pray you take all of this and as we live for you this week, shining your light, may you fill us afresh, live within us and move through us. We thank you that you're with us as we go this week. You are God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We go in your name. Amen. God bless and have a wonderful week.